keying. Finally, today we're talking about how to key things out like a boss. We know what's the difference between blue screen and green screen, when to use which, why and how to light them properly. If you haven't seen these videos, go check them out. It's literally two last videos before this one. The keying principles are pretty much the same for any colored background. Green, blue, doesn't matter, you're working in the same manner. Important thing to understand about keying is that there is no universal formula, no universal rig, no universal approach for the perfect key. Uh, you have to understand the concepts of keying before mastering the tools. It's always an experiment and always very individual to the shot you're working on. Due to the nature of the shot, due to the lighting, due to the tone of the background and so on and so forth. Depending on your shot, most of the times you would use multiple tools simultaneously in order to achieve the perfect key. Which tool to use is determined by the core concepts of key. In any footage there can't be just one alpha. I'm sure you know that white is visible and black is transparent. But in this example, where I'm waving with my hand, the hand has motion blur, which is a problematic area. This kind of problem would have to get a special treatment because it's not fully transparent and it's not fully visible, it's something in between. So the value for this kind of area would be gray or 0.5. This is crucial to understand that perfect uh, key, perfect alpha doesn't consist only from zero to one values or black to white values. It has intermediate values for edges, for motion blur, for hair, which I don't have, but <laughs> always remember that if there's something you can see in the image, something you can distinguish in the image, you can key it out. So while keying, you should follow some simple steps. Firstly, garbage mats. Remove all unwanted elements from your shot prior in your work. Secondly, determine your core key, the area that is 100% visible. And then finally, refine your edges, get your edge key. All this will make uh, sense in a second. Let's uh, go to Fusion. In Fusion, we do all the regular stuff. Control space, loader, and select your sequence. In my case, it's something I prepared earlier. In this sequence, I have fur, I have some motion blur and a hot spot on the floor, a potentially problematic area. First thing, we want to eliminate all unwanted elements in our shot, like this debris on the floor. I'll just draw some masks around those areas. If you would have some light stands in your frame, you would do the same with them. If you would do right click, add tool, and go to mat, you would see a lot of different options in there. If you're a newcomer, it doesn't really make sense. You don't know which one to choose. So I'm not saying everyone's doing it, but when I started to mess with green and blue screen, I always used primat. So you select background color by just stroking any area of the backdrop. And straight away you see transparency and a lot of problems that comes with it. If I would click A on my keyboard, it will show me the alpha channel and you see how much noise and artifacts I have in there. I can select clean background noise tool and start selecting problematic areas. It will keep shrinking more and more of blue screen. It's now a good time to attach our garbage mat, which are those polygons we drew earlier. And then I'll just keep refining the backdrop with more strokes. Here's our first problem. My shoes were reflecting a lot of blue. So I can select the clean foreground noise tool and try to get those details back. But then it reveals a bit of the floor. You can keep trying forever, but it's not gonna change much. You see our fur is looking is looking terrible. But the thing is that a lot of those math tools, they're named accordingly. Primat. 
is what it says right on a package. It's primary matte. Uh, let's go to color by clicking C. We have some more tabs there in primat. Contract expand. Um, by doing this, you're shrinking or extending the, the matte, the alpha blur, blurring the edge. Usually you don't touch this until later stages. Threshold. Threshold can be really handy uh, to clean up some stuff around the edges, but still this doesn't even closely look like something acceptable. Let's try something else from the matte list. Let's try Ultra Cure. Just select the, uh, the color that you want to remove from the shot. Slap A on your keyboard to see alpha. And here we see that result is absolutely different from what we saw in Primat. You can correct the background. Without doing much with this tool, you see that it preserves details like fur and all that stuff. If you would click through tabs, you see that you have a lot of options. I'm particularly interested in threshold at the moment to remove more of the blue screen like that. Touch our garbage mat to this one too. Threshold does destroy a little bit of details in our in our edges, but that's fine. You can use restore fringe option. It will restore some details, but it will also bring back some of the artifacts of the screen and then you won't be able to eliminate it with threshold. Spill, you can choose the method and it will remove some uh, blue spill, blue in our case. Fringe gamma here helps you to control the brightness of the edges. It helps on the compositing stage when you want to blend your subject better in your background. We would switch to primat. You see the difference is pretty big. While working with Primat, you have a second stage of control in there. Let's right click, add to matte and select matte control. Attach Primat to it. And here you can see you can contract or expand your edges even more. You can blur your edges. You have a spill suppressor in there. You can control that. Uh, you can choose the color of the spill. Let's try to bring some details back by using matte sponge. By using spill sponge you can try to remove the floor underneath, but in this particular case it doesn't change much. The bloody floor is still there. You can try to shrink it by matte minus. It does help a little bit, but not much. And the reason we want Primat to be good is because it's our primary mat. It has to tell our further key where the solid area is. All right, this looks fine. In Ultra Keyer, we see that we have details and we don't have spill. It's uh, looking nice. But uh, in my chin, we see there's some transparency. We want to eliminate it. That's why we needed Primat. Now we can plug Primat and Matte Control into Ultra Keyer and specify where the solid part of our alpha is. See, it removes all the transparent areas on myself. And now in Matte Control, we can dial down the Primat, bring it back a little bit. Let's see what's going on there. So it's looking like this. It's shrinking the edges inwards. And Ultra Keyer then picks it up and knows that this area should be solid. There should be no transparency in there. And my shoes looks fine too. So let's try to comp this on bicolor background. Black, white, merge, comp. Let's figure out our problematic areas. Fur looks kind of all right. The edges can mess with contract expand on our, on our matte control a little bit. On ultra keyer we can bring in some details by dialing gamma in and out. Many artists would consider this as acceptable key by this point. 
And it always depends. That's my fa favorite phrase. Depends on what kind of shot you're after. Maybe this quality is enough for what you're doing. I don't know. But I will show you the method that I prefer myself better. Uh, in ideal scenario, someone on set would capture a clean plate of the backdrop. And uh, I prefer to use the tool uh, called Delta Keyer. Uh, here it is. Uh, let's quickly copy our primat from there because this one was fine. Okay, connect it. Plug our garbage mat in. Okay, and Delta Keyer is similar to Ultra Keyer. You just select the background, you can do balance, you can gain the color. Delta Keyer is uh, preserving a lot of details, same as Ultra Keyer. And again, you have controls like threshold um, that can help. We have the same problem. We have transparency on my chin, transparency on my coat, whatever, everywhere on myself. The main reason why I like to use Delta Keyer is because, as I mentioned, in an ideal world, someone would capture the clean plate, uh, but you don't necessarily need a real clean plate. If you would right click, add tool, mat, and there you would see clean plate node. For method, I usually use ranges because it allows me to select, mm, to select different areas of my backdrop and it will include all the tonalities in it. So here we go. The whole purpose of clean plate is to create a clean plate by eroding the edges. So we're completely excluding our subject from the plate and then we just grow edges like that. Just like magic. We almost have our clean plate. Let's blur this a bit. Here we go. This will serve as our clean plate. In Delta Keyer you have input for clean plate. This one. On the first side not that many things are different. When you start to mess with a lot of settings within Delta Keyer, it really makes a difference. Check out how many details we're preserving in the fur. Let's compare it to our first version of the key. Ultra Keyer, well, Primat is hilarious. Ultra Keyer is better, but it's nothing comparing to Delta Keyer with Clean Plate. Let's also specify our solid mat. So this is now starting to look like a decent key. We have details in fur, we have uh, solid. Just need to get rid of that annoying edge. Let's comp this one on top of our black and white back background. Let's compare it to the first version. You see the difference, right? It's a massive, massive one. It's like day and night in terms of details. Preservation. Preservation funny word. Fringe Gamma again helps you on actual comp stage, allows you to blend the edges of your subject better into your um, CG environment or whatever your new plate is. And shoes are looking fine. So yeah, this is looking much better than the first version of our key. Let's quickly Google some something interesting for a background like this CG garage quickly comp myself in there. It's just easier to see the quality of the key within the context. Here you go, now you can actually see how Fringe Gamma can help you. It really helps to fine tune the blending of the edges. Now you can color correct this a bit. All right, this is still looking terrible, but you got the flow, right? In this sequence, uh, I intentionally waved with my hands to introduce some motion blur. Like here, see? So motion blur is always a pain in the even Delta Keyer. And Delta Keyer is doing fine with it. Let's quickly dis disconnect our primer. And you will see that we actually saved those details and motion blur is considered. Semi-transparent as it's supposed to be, it's okay. We can control our French gamma to blend it better. At this point I think we can go in here and clean some, 
clean foreground, clean background to get some more details back. Because when your final shot is plain color, white or black, it's one thing, but it's never the case. That's There are no shots like that. And when you have like an environment in there, it's another thing. You can afford yourself to have some artifacts in the background. They will blend into the final shot perfectly. That's fine. Um, so don't hesitate to restore some details. I'll color correct myself a little bit more, trying to remove that, that spill in the motion blur. That's a little bit better. Let's find another background. Like this one, for example. Ah, See, in this one, motion blur is totally fine. It's like super natural. Fur is great. Edges could be better. Let's correct fringe gamma. Let's create a dodgy shadow real quick. And that's of course not how you create shadows in CG scenes. I bet you noticed that we're still working without Primat, where we have some transparencies on my body. And you've seen that it's, uh, sometimes it's absolutely fine. It blends with the new backdrop quite well. The key's looking fine, motion blur is there, edges are there. Soft edges are there. And you see that it's quite a lot of fiddling, different parameters and many different tools. There is no one universal note to do a perfect key for you. Every shot is unique, every lighting is unique, every target scene is unique, so you just need to know the concepts. So one more time, primat hard key. Delta keyer or ultra keyer, soft key, then you combine them. This tutorial by no means is a detailed like fusion guide to keying or anything like that. I, I am explaining the concept of keying, explaining the importance of hard key, soft key, merging them together, working with your shot and the uh, importance of individual approach. And I hope this will trigger the curiosity in you and encourage you to go and learn more details about keying techniques and things like that. Let's key the same shot out in After Effects. Okie doc, let's bring our sequence in, interpret it as 25 frames, create a comp, straight away go to your effects and presets tab, type in key. Usually what you would grab, well again I'm speaking on behalf of myself, I was doing it with key light only. Uh, but I don't know since when uh, After Effects have that amazing preset, key light, key cleaner and advanced spill suppressor. This is basically all you would ever need in After Effects for keying. Let's select our blue color. I think it's better to select the color from the hotspot. Change the view to screen matte to see our alpha. Uh, if you would expand screen matte tab, um, you have like a threshold control in here called clip black, clip white. You have a lot of t uh, a lot of things in there to help you achieve amazing key, like foreground color correction, edge color correction but we're not going to go into details with these. So we have uh, some artifacts on my chin. We lost quite a bit of details from the fur. Let's enable key cleaner, key cleaner. And by just enabling it, you see that it restores quite a lot of details. Fur is all there, but the edges are quite fuzzy now. Let's enable spill suppressor to eliminate that blue spill. Change the method to ultra, because in ultra you can select the color of your backdrop if it's anything than really famous green screen. In our case it's blue. Okay, to get rid of these fuzzy edges uh, we can shrink the mat a little bit. Well, at least try to do it. 
can try enabling, disabling, reduce chatter. But be careful with this thing, because in animations it can lead to some artifacts, like dancing edges in the animation. Let's comp it on something. Something with plain colors. Yeah, it's quite blurry, and it's key cleaner introducing that blurriness. Let's increase alpha contrast. If you would increase alpha contrast, you see that that blurriness, blurriness is going away while saving some details for you. And it's a pretty good result considering the amount of work we had to do. Basically did nothing and <laughs> just dropped a preset then. And look at that. That's that's a decent decent key right there. You probably haven't noticed because uh, I'll be speeding up, speeding up a lot of actions, but After Effects is quite a bit slower than Fusion is. Let's check out the motion blur. Aha, uh -huh. looks terrible. But if it would reduce alpha contrast, it gets better. But then we're introducing our fuzzy edges back. I think you just need to find a golden middle. It's quite quick in After Effects, but I still prefer Fusion and all node-related things. Final stop on our journey, gentlemen, will be Photoshop, because not all of us are doing any animations, a lot of people are working with stills, and a lot of photographers are working with colored backdrops, specifically for keying purposes. So let's select one of the frames, unlock it, go to select color range and we will select our blue color selection preview change it to grayscale to see what we're doing increase fuzziness okay start to crippling in into my skin where the spill is but you know when you're not working with a sequence of images and your subject is not moving oh my god it's so much easier so what I would do is I would leave it like that select OK and just hit delete delete my backdrop there it is and depending on your background again your final target maybe that light pollution, that blue stuff, would be even beneficial to your shot because the subject would be integrated much better. If it's not the case, just use a razor, just delete all the artifacts from the backdrop. Like this. You have all the details in the fur. You're just removing that annoying noise and light pollution from your background. Getting some shadows back. I'm using a tablet so I can draw that stuff. That's again a really quick way of doing it. And then to remove spill you would use uh, tools like color balance. Just kind of suppressing blue color from, from the subject. Result is acceptable. But that's still. You can refine edges as much as you want. Manually craft it, polish it. Blue screen and photography and stills is used purely for speeding up the main color removal action. That's it. It's not that hard, is it? As usual, guys, I hope this was useful. I would like to remind you that lighting is everything. Light your background properly, light your subject properly. Match the subject's light to your target scene light. Make sure they almost exist in the same environment. That way, keying will be much cleaner and less noticeable after the comp. That will be it for today. Thank you for watching. Peace. Yeah.